Rahim, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Madrasa Ziyal Badr, the official opening of the Father's Home. Um, Alhamdulillah, I think very appropriate that uh, Kari Musa has chosen Women's Day for the opening of the Father's Home. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I tried to extract the reasoning behind it, and uh, we rather leave Kari Musa to explain that one on one. It's better that way. Before we, co we, we proceed, it's um, our great pleasure and honor to introduce our special guest of honor, Molana Abbas Ali, the son of Mona Zubair Ali Sab. We'd like to get Molana Abbas to come and sit up on the stage with us, please. Molana? Fadal? Jazakallah khairan, khairul jazah. On behalf of uh, the trustees, the directors of Madrasa Ziyal Badr, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here this afternoon for the official opening of the Father's Home and the program that is to take place, inshallah. Our program is not going to be too lengthy. And by the way, people, there are no lucky draws. As you can see, we've got a glass case here. No Hajj visas available from me. So please just understand that. I've been asked that already from people in the audience. One needs to ask the question, why do we have to have homes for our parents, for our mothers, for our fathers? But there's a serious necessity around in today's day and age that seems to have been changing over the years that leaves us aloof in terms of the manner in which we deal with our elderly and how we look after them. In today's day and age, you have both parents, uh, both kids working, youngsters who are trying to take care of their own children. Life is very difficult. Life is not easy. When we find these facilities become available, one needs to support it. One needs to make sure that we help people like Kari Musa and the trustees and directors of the Father's Home, Madrasa Ziyal Bad, the Father's Home and the Mother's Home that is adjacent to the Madrasa project here, in order for us to ensure dignity, completeness for the people that we are seeing age in years because tomorrow that could be us tomorrow that could be us that could be our process and this is where we're going to reside we do not want to find ourselves in a situation where we are devoid of an islamic ethos or an islamic process or an islamic structure alhamdulillah as much as one would ask the question why is it needed there's a great necessity for it when we look at a father there are many fathers sitting in this audience here we don't realize the pillar of strength, the structure, the shoulder, the foundation that that particular person plays throughout the life of a person. We only realize the value that that particular person has or has had with us when they are no longer with us. We need to make sure in whichever way we take care of our parents, we take care of our fathers, in a manner that was taught to us by our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before continuing, I'm going to call up Ahmad Sidat to render us with a qiraat in order to ask and invoke the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on this function. Ahmad Sidat, Fadl. A future father of tomorrow. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المحدوب عليهم ولا الظالمين آمين 
Allah, tabarak Allah. Alhamdulillah, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants khair and barakah to the young man. And inshallah to become a better Qari than his grandfather one day inshallah. Before we call upon Qari Musa Sidat as our next reciter, I'd just like to introduce the builder of the father's home and the mother's home. Um, our builder Kurbas from Spartan Civil Services is here with us. Uh, please just uh, take a stand so everybody can see who was there. Thank you, Kurbas. Round of applause. And our architect, Sadek Musa. Is Sadek in the audience? Sadek, please, if you just stand up. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all, inshallah. Next up is uh, a khirat uh, rendered by Kari Musa Sidat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء ذات البروج واليوم الموعود وشاهد ومشهود قتل أصحاب الأخدود النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وما نقبوا منهم إلا أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء شهيد إن الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولو معذاب الحريق إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات تجري جنات تجري من تحت النار ذلك الفوز الكبير إن بطش ربك لشديد إنه هو يبدئ ويعيد وهو الغفور الودود ذو العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد هل لتاك حديث الجنود فرعون وثمود بل الذين كفروا في تكذيب والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله تبارك الله wonderful rendition of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep Kari Musa sahib with long umr in the service of his deen inshallah before we call upon you know the next reciter some memory just comes through a young girl sitting in the kitchen with her mother asked her mother where do little girls come from mother says you need to go and ask your father so she goes to the father the father sitting on the couch man united liverpool playing ask the father where do you know children come from father says you know through evolution monkeys became you know uh, human beings and so and so but the father's interest is obviously on the tv so she runs into the kitchen, mother calls the father for something to eat. 
sitting down and she says to the mother, Mom, you weren't truthful with me. You wanted to tell me something else, but dad said, you know, children come from monkeys and evolution. She says, no, your dad was talking about his side of the family. <laughs> we call upon Hafiz Sa'ad Sidat to render a naat. Um, thereafter, we will continue with a lecture by uh, one of the directors of Madrasa Zia al-Badr, Brother Abdurrahman Daji. Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Qadam ha bilal aj, chalna sayari, lo ab al vida al vida hai hamari. Qadam ha bilal aj, chalna sayari. I think before we call upon uh, Brother Abdurrahman Daji from the Board of Directors of Madrasa Ziyal Badr, I would like all the staff and the directors and trustees of Madrasa Ziyal Badr just to please stand. All of you so that the public can actually see who the directors, trustees and staff of Madrasa Ziyal Badr are, please. Those stars, the staff, can you all please stand? All the staff, where are the rest of the trustees in the audience? Alhamdulillah, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all long umr, grant you all khair and barakah in the efforts that you are doing, not only with these students that sit in front of us, but with the mother's home as well as with the father's home that is about to open now. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives khair and barakah in this inshallah. Brother Abdurrahman Daji will give us um, a quick uh, talk inshallah. Jazakallah. Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulil kareem amma baad. 
السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان دا نیم آف اللہ موسٹ گریشیس موسٹ مرسی فل ان سورہ الاسرا اللہ سیز یو سسٹین ہیز کمانڈڈ دیٹ یو ورشپ اونلی ہیم اینڈ یو بی کائنڈ ٹو یور پیرنٹس اف اینی ون آف دیم اور بوتھ آف دیم ریچ اول ایج ان یور لائف ٹائم ڈو ناٹ ایون سی ٹو دیم اوف اینڈ ڈو ناٹ کال دیم اسپیک ٹو دیم وتھ ریسپیکٹ lower before them the wings of humility out of compassion and say o sustainer show mercy to them as they raised me when i was little old age is mentioned because this is generally a time of weakness and dependence however even parents who are young should be served and respected thus obedience to parents is a major sin that distances a person from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and makes one eligible for divine punishment. If we care for our parents now, then only our children will care for us. The new generation assimilating their parents as a barrier in this competitive world. The today's system is arguing that the two age bands cannot grow together. But still many people are attached to the old values and sociability and are also against the old age home and disqualifying the separation from their parents. Islam completely disqualifies disintegration of parents from the family. Therefore, as far as I know, there is no old age home system in Islamic countries or in Muslim communities. For whatever reasons, our own fear of aging or just a lack of understanding, we have failed to embrace and include the elderly in our daily living. We ignore them. We shunt them aside. We need to reach out and bring them back into the system, into society's mainstream. We must also recognize the great contribution older people can make to all of us, the living embodiment of our past. If we can share the experiences they have lived through and the perspective which these experiences have given them on contemporary times, it will enrich our lives and our appreciation for our heritage and enhance the wisdom with which we confront the future. If you are to stop treating old people like another class of disposable objects, which go the way of all things in our throwaway society, then our public policies and social attitude must change. They must reflect the knowledge that aging is a normal part of the life cycle, not necessarily to be dreaded that those who have reached, reached advanced age need and merit special attention from society and that given this attention, the contribution of the age to society can enhance the quality and civility of life for us all. Those changes will come when we realize that old age is a fate which awaits us all. Yeah, I would like to share my feelings for old age homes people. If I would be an old age and if it would happened to me or if, if I would have been forced to stay at an old age home, then I would think that whatever I did for my children was unjustified. I was wrong for dying for my children's career and life. I would throw them at a remote home with a servant for caring. We might not remain awakened night after night for their nourishment. It would be possible with money. I think these small short memories must be narrated in front of every son and daughter. It is our primary duty to look after parents till the end of their life. They have done a lot for us. What we are today is only because of them. They have sacrificed many things in their life for our sake. I can say they are responsible for our physical existence without which we would not have survived on this earth. As such, we, we must not encourage setting up of more and more old age homes. We shall think of looking after them and also educate others also to follow this in their families. They are the greatest asset to the Ummah at large. They are the light of our life. Let our parents live long with lots of happiness and seen within compassion in their progeny's eyes. I conclude that the beginning older and the existence of younger is a cyclic biological process. No one can get rid of these two states of life. 
Old age people need care, love, and healthy emotional family sharing for satisfaction. N new one needs growth, success in today's competitive world. These two objectives are to be strategically balanced. The parent is to be given high priority over everything. They should be included in a family running process so that they could feel themselves not ignored. Half a century ago, old age homes were looked at with antagonism and resentment. They were perceived to be a refuge for those helpless elderly victims who were cast away by brutally ungrateful children. This idea is, however, changing rapidly. Today, a fair number of people opt to move into a retirement retreat where parents of affluent children well set settled within the country and abroad live in a home which provides vigilant security. Please, our honorable guests and the broader Muslim society out there, remember we, the directors of Madrasa Ziyal Badr and its membership, have not set up this home out of spite, nor for monetary gain, nor for name and fame, but solely due to necessity commanded by our modern lifestyle, environment that has snatched thinking power and brainwashed our innocent youth. Also let it be known, with our existing mother's home, we experience a monetary shortfall month in and month out, with our, and month in and month out which Alhamdulillah is overcome with the grace of Almighty Allah. We have deliberated, debated, pondered, researched and sought advice for over 25 years before we embarked on this unnecessary necessity of establishing these homes for the aged. We make sincere dua that Allah guides us to always do the righteous deeds for His pleasure and bless us all with His infinite barakah. I have been given this mammoth task of passing the vote of thanks. We start off by expressing our gratitude to our creator, creator and sustainer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the infinite nameth he has bestowed upon us. Without his help, we cannot accomplish nor fulfill our dreams to reality. We acknowledge our guest of honor, Hazrat Maulana Abbasari, for accepting our invitation to guide and advise us. Our program director, Shaheen Esop, our honored guests, our volunteers, and one and all present here today for gracing us with your presence. A special thanks to ITV, Radio Islam for the media enhancement, Ahmad Asmal from Pi Excellence for the sound, to the numerous persons in the background, too many to mention by name, who have assisted us during this momentous occasion. Our heartfelt thanks to all mothers and sisters who have worked tirelessly in putting together the delicious delicacies prepared for our enjoyment here this afternoon. At least we forget our generous anonymous donors and organizations who have contributed wholeheartedly and generously with the construction of the Father's home, singling out one special donor who paid the full amount towards acquiring the land. We say Jazakallah with sincerity from the bottom of our hearts. We also thank all our donors and supporters of many years and appreciate all persons for the sincere du'as for our success and achievements. May Allah keep us steadfast on Islam and grant us unity, love, understanding, mahabbah, and an abundance of barakah and halal risk. Ameen. I hope that I have not failed anyone in passing my vote of thanks. If I did, please forgive me because I assure you it wasn't done intentionally, but at the same time, remember if I did not salute you, our Supreme Being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will without a doubt recognize you. Before I take my leave, I, rem I am reminded of the story of a 94-year-old 94 gentleman who was experiencing pain in his left leg. When he went to see his physician and complained, the doctor said to him, Well, Haji, what do you expect when you're 94 years old? To that, the old man replied, But doctor, my right leg is... 94 years old too, and it doesn't hurt. Jazakallah for your attention. We say Jazakallah khairan to Brother Abdurrahman Daji. I think we need to echo the sentiments of thanks to those donors that have generously donated to the whole project of Madrasa Ziyal Badr, the mother's home, the father's home, the madrasa, the masjid. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you an infinite amount of barakah, khair, taqwa, and grant that your rizq be widened so much that we continuously donate generously, not only to this cause, but to other causes as well. The Muslim ummah is in dire need. The ummah itself and the people around us, there are many projects that we can contribute to and become part and parcel of. And I think that is important that we, are, that we do that in order to recognize who our creator is, inshallah. Profound words from Brother Abdurrahman in terms of taking care of our parents. And I think that is very, very important. But the need in society for these kinds of facilities certainly has become a general norm. And this is unfortunately a problem that we face, but a reality and a solution that is presented for it as well, inshallah. Our next person up on stage is Hafiz Adam Koya, who's going to render a knot for us. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nabi Akram, Shafi Azam, Nabi Akram, Shafi Azam, Duke Diloka, Payam Lelo Tamam. के हम सताए करे हुए हैं सलाम ले लो शिकाश्त काश्ती है तेज दारा नजर से रूपो शिहे का नारा नहीं कोई Shafi Azam, tu ke dilo ka payam le lo. Ajib mushkil me kar wo hai, na koi jada na pas ba hai. Ajib mushkil. Shakile Rahbar Chupe Rahzan Shakile Rahbar Chupe Rahzan Tumhi Mohabbat Se Kam Lelo Nabi Akram Shafi Azam के दिलों का पयाम ले लो कदम कदम पे है गौफ़े रहज़म ज़मीन भी दुश्मन फ़लक भी दुश्मन कदम कदम पे है गौफ़े रहज़म ज़मीन भी दुश्मन فلک بھی دشمن زمانہ ہم سے ہوا ہے بدزن خبر تو غیر الانام لے لو نبی اکرم شافی عظم تو کے دلوں کا پیام لے موسیقی 
से काम ले लो नबी अकीरम शाफी आजम दुखे दिलो का पयाम ले लो ये कैसी मंजिल पे आ गए हैं ना कोई अपने ना हम किसी के तुम अपने दामन में आज नबी अकीरम शफी आजम दुखे दिलो का पयाम ले लो ये दिल में अरमा है अपने तईब मजार अक दस पे जाके एक दिन सुनाओ उनको मैं हाल दिल का कहूँ मैं उनसे सलाम ले लो नबी अकरम शफी आजम तू के दिलो का पयाम ले लो नबी अकरम शफी आजम के दिलो का पयाम ले लो वट अ वंडरफुल रेंडिशन ऑफ दैट नाथ बिफोर वी कॉल अपॉन द नेक्स्ट हाफ इज टू रेंडर द नेक्स्ट नाथ वी ऑन द स्टूडेंट्स एट सिट इन फ्रंट ऑफ मद्रेस जियाल बदर um kari musa sidat students but i think uh, very appropriate that we equally honor a student that has uh, passed through kari musa sidat's hands hafiz mohammed adam has joined us jazakallah khairan and now we call upon hafiz ismail sumare to come and render us with another nat jazakallah uh, one of the previous students uh, needs to stand so that uh, people can recognize who hafiz mohammed adam is mashallah tabarakallah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. رسول الله رسول الله وقدوتنا على الأرض وضع يدنسنا رسول الله وقدوتنا ورسول الله رسول الله وقدوتنا على الأرض وضع يدنسنا رسول الله وقدوتنا ورسول الله وكلوب 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 إلا تنهر ورسول الله رسول الله وقدوتنا للأرض وضع يدنسنا رسول الله وقدوتنا ورسول الله رسول الله قدوتنا ودعوة رسالتنا بكانة سعادتنا له وجبت محبتنا ورسول الله رسول الله وقدوتنا للأرض وضع يدنسنا رسول الله 
rasulullahi wa quduwatuna wa rasulullah laqad kamlatu mazayahu wa rabbul arsh rabbahu fa kullur rasul tardahu imaman inda masrahu wa rasulullah rasulullah wa kuduwatuna lal arda wa dha'ayudan nisuna rasulullah wa kuduwatuna wa rasulullah ilal ma'ruf yad'una wa bil ihsan yahduna wa bil qur'an yahdina wa bil akhlaq yahmina wa rasulullah rasulullah wa kuduwatuna lal arda wa dha'ayudan nisuna rasulullah wa kuduwatuna wa rasulullah wa kulubun wa kulubun wa kulubun illa tanhar wa rasulullah rasulullah wa kuduwatuna lal arda wa dha'ayudan nisuna rasulullah wa kuduwatuna wa rasulullah la ilaha illa allah la ilaha illa allah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mashallah tabarakallah wonderful rendition i have asked for a cv of our guest of honor but i fear that um, i will be doing injustice even by reading out the cv molana bas ali son of molana zubair ali sahab um is going to render us with some nasiha some advices um as our guest of honor molana faddal ya sheikh please listen attentively and let us benefit from it inshallah ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم اولياء بعض الى اخر الايه وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمنون كجسد واحد ان اشتكى احد اشتكى كله وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمنون كالبنيان يشد بعضه بعضا صدق الله وصدق الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم all thanks and all praises due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator and sustainer most loving most forgiving most gracious and most merciful we send salatu salam on his beloved habib allah's final nabi and messenger sayyidina wa maulana muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and on his illustrious sahaba and companions and on all those that follow in their footsteps till the day of qiyamah alhamdulillah it gives me great pleasure and i do feel humbled also to be asked by qari musa to say a few words of advices here I myself is the most needy of advisers but we say wadhkir fa inna dhikra tanfa'u al-mu'minin reminder and constantly remind for reminder proves beneficial to the believers so the speaker also himself is need, needy of those advisers as well as all of us today's gathering here coincides with mother's day we all know it a woman's day sorry woman's day which 
covers all aspects of the females, mothers, sisters, and all other aspects. So Alhamdulillah, as Muslims, it makes us very happy and proud that we as Muslims also are not behind. We have behind this building, another building, which I think I, if I heard correctly, 25 years ago, the a mother's home was started, and Alhamdulillah, that is operating for the last 25 years, Alhamdulillah. It was about nine months ago, Kharissa mentioned to me, less than a year that we were here up of the street and laid the foundation stone of the father's home. And shukr alhamdulillah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's help, that today within a year that, it, that is completed, alhamdulillah. Now what I wish to state, alhamdulillah, a lot of good things have come out from our director, brother Haji Abdurrahman Daji's paper with regard to the essential spirit of Islam. The essential spirit of Islam is a, a, a spirit of caring and sharing and looking after one another. And that comes from the Quran Kareem. Allah mentions in the Quran Kareem that the believing man and the believing woman, three translations are given of awliya. We generally take it as friends. Believing man and believing woman are friends of one another. We share that aspect of friendship and love for one another, one. But the other two translations are more befitting on this occasion that we are. They are protectors of one another, and the other one, they are caretakers of one another. Under the word awliya, all of these three meanings come in there. So we need to understand that is the spirit, the community spirit, which the Quran Karim speaks about. If we find we don't have that community spirit in the sense of caring for one another, looking after one another's needs, needs, protecting one another, and showing love and concern for one another, we can be making as much salah, as much tahajjud, as much zikr and Quran, but if we are living a life of selfishness, which we refer to as selfish piety, that's just for myself I live, and for my jannat, and for my, for my heaven and paradise, then there's something truly wrong with that individual. That he's part of a community, but he doesn't care for anyone around him, and he says, as long as my world is carrying on, it's fine with me. That's the ayat of the Quran Karim, which sets the tone for this afternoon's gathering in a sense of how we as Muslims should be thinking. The hadith of Nabiya Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, two I recite in front of you. One speaks about the aspect of suffering, difficulty within the ummah, that whenever there is a suffering in the ummah, uh, and individuals are undergoing uh, any kind of problems, we may be very far away from those people, but because of the bond of Iman, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we also suffer with them. Maybe physically we can't be there for those people who are in Syria, for example, or those in Palestine, or those in Burma, or anywhere else, but the fact is we suffer. And in the suffering, the minimum we can do is our moral duty that we make dua for them. O oh Allah, alleviate their difficulties and hardships, and O oh Allah, fulfill their needs from your hidden treasures. And on the practical level, whatever we can do on a practical level by contributing towards any of these uh, 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 you know, appeals that are made for that, alhamdulillah, that's the, I, the, the climax of that, that we should be doing that, and we should keep all of these things in our mind. So the hadith mentions that the believers, the ummah is like one body, like we have a body. What a factual example, that if any part of the body gets cut or thorn pricks that part, the entire body becomes restless and is in pain. Yet the, 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 the pain is in just one part of the body. Now, the person is feeling the pain. If it's a bigger cut, he, he says now, now the legs will carry him to the doctor. The tongue will speak, uh, the legs are carrying for the sake of that cut on the hand. The eyes are showing him to the doctor and the hand is pointing to that place where he's got cut. So the entire body gets into action for the suffering or the pain on that one part of the body. Now imagine if that part of the body where there is this pain or this hurt or injury and that part, the rest of the body doesn't feel that pain. 
then there's a problem. Then that part of the body is with the body, but it is, we say, no feeling in the body. There's no feeling in that body. Maybe the person, that part has become paralyzed or whatever else it is. The, then there's a problem. So then that shows that if there isn't that feelings, then we have become spiritually paralyzed in the sense of thinking of the suffering of other Muslims. Right. So we suffer and look at those difficulties and suffer the pain. The second hadith and the saying of the Prophet وسلم, with regard to what Nabi وسلم, has mentioned, that the believers are like a building. We see all buildings around us. One brick reinforces and strengthens the other brick. So this entire structure, all the bricks up, mortar and the cement is the holding thing. And it strengthens. So that is how the believers should be. We stand by one another and support one another and reinforce one another with regard to whatever the community is facing or whatever difficulties we are going through. Now keeping this ayat of the Quran al Karim and keeping this to hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and now understanding from there what the, the community spirit should be of Muslims and what the ideal should be of Muslims that the Muslim or the Mu'min lives for other people less for himself but more for other people and not vice versa. Coming now to the, the aspect that there are two, two aspects. Mashallah, much has been elaborated by our director. One is the aspect which you call farzayin. That duty which is uh, uh, essential and which is an obligation upon every individual. I'm not talking from the point of view of salah and zakah and all that. That's from the ibadat point of view. But from the point of view of parents. Parents. That if we have parents, old age parents or grandparents, or you know, those kind of people, it is our obligation and duty to look after them and to see to their needs and make their last, the year, last years of their life comfortable and take their duas. In reality, we are doing ourselves a favor by helping them and serving them. We should understand that that is the essential duty and obligation of a Muslim towards his elders, you know, uh, parents, etc. Then there is another aspect, as has been already mentioned somewhere, that today there's the whole social, social, what we call it, economic landscape is changed, is changed and is changing rapidly by the day. So many things are taking place that, that you know, that we used to speak about a community, a family, you know, we, we all live together, they ate from one pot, etc. Many of the elderly people are living, they will still remains and think that that's how we lived. But it's changing. Today we, we live in a concept of a nucleus family. You know, everyone just, you, you know, parents are somewhere else. The person, the son is the moved away, he's married, he's got his children. So a whole lot of things have, been, have, uh, have become different from the last 30, 40 years as we are seeing. And that is where it calls for us now to think about those particular people, right? Those who don't have any families near them, any sons, any daughters, any support from them. And they have become widowed, they are widows or widowers, and they are old and infirm. I won't forget the last time when I came here, when we came for the foundation in Sermon Qari, Saab mentioned to me a very touching incident. He said there was an incident here somewhere in Johannesburg, I suppose, where an old man was living on his own and he passed away. Gee? Old lady. It was an old lady and no one knew about it. Probably she never had any close family members. If there were, they must have deserted her and just left her to herself. And later on they found out, you know, maybe the uh, smell was coming out of that apartment. And, they, uh, and then when they checked out what's happening, they found out that she had passed away a few days ago. And uh, that's the situation. It touched him. That was what triggered this aspect that we need to do something for our old people, whether they are our mothers whether they are our, our, our fathers, our sisters, whatever it so may be. So we are here talking of the farze kifaya. Farze and we have heard this in our madrasa days. One is our essential obligation towards our parents that we need to, and keep all those hadiths in mind. And the ayats of the Quran al Karim, that serving your parents, what are the rewards in dunya, in akhirat, and all of that that goes with that. But again, to look at these situations, 
which calls for this aspect where we need to establish institutions like this, orphanages, homes for mothers, homes for fathers, etc., etc., where they don't have any body close to them to support them and to help them. Now that is where the ummah, the community gets into action. They let us now fulfill the farz e in the sense of establishing something for particular, these kind of particular cases. And if anybody finds a difficulty with that, then that person needs to understand that the understanding of what, is, yani what are the challenges of the time we are living, he hasn't understood that. So that calls for, today we have, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned it, you know, that in a home where there is a, often you put, a, a, you know, that home is blessed, etc. To hear this growing up and people, old people will say that every Muslim home is an old age home. What did that refer to? The old mother, the old father are there and the children are looking after them, the grandchildren are sitting and talking with them. That is how it was. That is the ideal of Islam. That's the ideal of Islam. But now the, the, the situations are changing and we need to look at, then we have the situation of a farz kifaya where we need to establish these kind of, not for people to abuse it, just standing outside and talking to one of my elders there, said the person is a millionaire and old age mother. And, you know, he, he's a millionaire and he wants to live up his life. So he leaves his mother in an old age home and he's gone o o overseas and settled down somewhere and enjoying his life. Now, these homes have not been established for people to abuse them. You know, and, and just to come and think that this is a good way to get rid of our elders and to get rid of our old age father. The person who does this is a deprived person, a very deprived person in the sense of a very, very mahroom person as well, that is deprived. I visited some of these old age homes, not this one, and an, another one where people are sitting, uh, you know, the old lady was saying that, you know, I have four sons and they are all well off and not one of them wants to keep me. They say we are making mashwara. Who is going to keep ma? The four sons are making mashwara, talking to one another, and they cannot come to a, 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 a conclusion or decision. Who is going to keep the mother? So they finally brought me and, and, and put me in an old age home. And the thing that touched my heart when she said that, when, she, when I brought up these four children of mine, four sons of mine, I didn't make mashwara with anybody. I brought one by one, I brought all of them up. Today they are making mashwara, they say, who's going to look after ma? Now this is the aspect we need to understand. For those people who think these, this, uh, these homes are being established for us to abuse and just come and dump off our old age people and, 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 and get and say, now we can do as we feel. This doesn't befit an Islamic community and our Islamic spirit. So, in line with what we have heard, that we need to understand the need and necessity for the establishment of these homes even orphanages. Now you see, mashallah, little, little children sitting here. Many of them are that they're getting ilam here. And alhamdulillah, it's a farz kifaya Maybe all of us can't have orphans in our homes. But alhamdulillah, Allah gives jazaa khair to Qari Musa and all those that go out of their way to, to, to help in fulfilling the farz kifaya in on behalf. Kifaya means on behalf of the entire community. And that's where we come into the picture. That we need to support these institutions Arisab could have gone through, surely these buildings couldn't have just come up, uh, you know, just uh, mushroomed up. There must have been a lot of planning and effort and, 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 and financial, con you, know, uh, 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 you know, aspects of it, which brought about these homes. And on the daily operating uh, operations also, every day, there's expenses. So where, that is where the community of a Muslim community, which is a living, compassionate, kind community, has that spirit was standing by. Some people will fulfill, fulfill this need for us and do the work, but we need from the back to support them and we need to, you know, help them in whichever way Allah Ta'ala has given us. Just remember this hadith Qudsi, where Allah Ta'ala speaks about on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will ask his servants. Allah is talking now. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is relating this on behalf of Allah. That Allah will ask, oh my servant, where were you when I was hungry? You didn't give me food? Ya Allah. Oh Allah, you are above eating and drinking. Oh, oh, yani, how could I come and feed you? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that had you fed a certain hungry person, looked after his needs, you would have found me there. You would have got my proximity closest to me because you looked after that, that servant of mine. Then Allah will ask, my servant, where were you when I was sick? Ya Allah, you're above being sick. How, in which way? Uh, and you didn't come visit me. How could I visit you, Allah? Allah, had you gone and visited the sick persons there in your community and, 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 and consoled them and supported them, you would have found me there. What would have found Allah there in the sense of his mercy, his rahmat, and the qurb and the closeness of Allah Ta'ala? The hadith mentions with regard to that, oh, my servant, I was thirsty. And you didn't give me water to drink. Oh Allah, but you're above that. Allah says, certain thirsty person came to your door and you didn't give him a drink of water. Had you given to him, you would have received my, bless, uh, my mercy, my rahmat and blessings from me. But this is a hadith of Qudsi. Allah is speaking. And as Muslims, we need to reflect and think about these things. That alhamdulillah, in the light of community spirit, stand by one another, support one another, especially our own parents, let us look after them. And, they, and where there isn't a situation, these are the people around us, people like, uh, mashallah, Qari Musa, Sabdamad Barakatum, etc., and the whole team that is assisting and helping him, that there we support them, that look, I, I don't have an orphan in my home, I, I don't have an old age father, mother, they have passed on in the mercy of Allah, but I'm going to support and help somebody else's, uh, you know, father or mother or old age person. Insha'Allah, Aziz. Remember, Allah says in the Quran, وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ مَعْلُومٌ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومٌ that in your wealth, in their wealth, Allah says, in the wealth of the wealthy people, there is a right, there is a haq, lisaili for the indigent poor person and the deprived person. All of those people have a right in the wealth of the wealthy people. And we need to give that wealth out, which is their right, by supporting these kind of institutions. So in conclusion, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah wa ta'ala accept Qari Musa's khidmat getting on now from 25 years and now mashallah probably after this program we'll be going to view the other building there on the other side that he has done this farzah kifaya for us but for us it is our duty that inshallah we support these kind of institutions and alhamdulillah have our share for the, in the hereafter we don't know who's which dua of which old person maybe that person sits at night and makes dua that oh Allah bless Qari Musa and all those that are involved and those people making it possible for me to be here because I've got no sons, I've got no daughters, no brothers, no sisters and they are making it possible for me to pass my last years, my twilight, my twilight years, Ya Allah, in, in this comfort. So inshallah we receive the dua of even one person, it will be enough for our akhirat. On these words, I conclude in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept Qarisab's khidmat and all those that are uh, you know, supporting this and make it a means and a provision and zakhira for the hereafter. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We say jazakallah khair, jazatu Molana Basali. Certainly profound words, I think just to um, alleviate some confusion. Alhamdulillah into the mother's home, the planning was done 25 years ago and the mother's home is in existence for four years. So, uh, you know, the seeds get planted many, many decades ago, and alhamdulillah, this all comes to fruition. Um, I'm going to call the Muaddin uh, from the Masjid, Brother Usman, to present a gift to uh, uh, Molana Basali. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that sawab will be granted to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this is just a token of gesture. May Allah accept, inshallah. And there's a, a tasbih that has been made. Um, Mawlana, a tasbih was made for you as well uh, with your name on it, alhamdulillah. Um, inshallah, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you khair and barakah and keeps you in his service, inshallah. Jazakallah. I'm going to call upon Karim Musa just to uh, give us a, uh, a brief process that is going to follow inshallah when we go across to the father's home um, so that we can uh, proceed with the opening of the uh, father's home with a dua there one sec
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مینی پیپل گیو ایس لاٹ آف آئیڈیاز ہاؤ ڈو وی ڈو اے اوپن ان آف اے بلڈنگ اوپن ان آف اے بزنس اوپن ان آف اے ہوم اینڈ دا بیسٹ وے ٹو اوپن اے ہوم اور اے بزنس اور وٹ ایوے اٹ از از بائی گیٹنگ یو پائیز پیپل انوالوڈ وتھ اے دوا سو وی گوئنگ ٹو ٹیک اے واک اباؤٹ to the father's home. Many of you, inshallah, Aziz, let me say it from now. We're not going to keep you tonight here. Yeah? We don't want you here. Yeah? You better go home, because if you see the facility, you may change your mind. We don't want you to do that. And at the same time, before we go, we're going to ask our students in an orderly manner to proceed to the hostel with the house masters please take the students to the hostel and while we doing that i have a little token of appreciation for brother shaheen also a special tasbi was made for him also which i am going to give it to shaheen shaheen jazakallah khair jaza what we going to do is once the students are gone uh, inshallah laziz We're going to proceed. You're going to have a walkabout. We're going to start. I'll be talking from here and uh, talking you up the road. And I will be telling you about Madrasa Ziaul Badr a little bit. A little Kaal Guzari, a little history about Madrasa Ziaul Badr. And then we'll talk about this Darul Hifs complex here. Then we'll talk about the mother's home. So when we reach the father's home, we're going to ask Maulana Abbas Ali Saab. to make a dua and then you'll have a walk through through the home inshallah laziz and uh, very strictly we want you to follow with us we don't want any of you to be left behind in that home and then after we have many many requests that some of the guests that are here haven't seen the mother's home so when we take a walk then we will go through the mother's home we will give you a bit of a tour guide through the mother's home and back again here so when we get back here when we leave here the ladies will be putting up whatever uh, they have made all the refreshments they are going to prepare that while we are away let us observe strict parda number 2 when we leave the father's home the mothers the ladies who are here they will want to see the father's home also and many of them will change their mind of not sending you here that's why we want them to see it also and the standard that we've set so that she may go home and the ma will change the standard also for you so that is the whole intention and then we'll come back here we'll have refreshments here adan for asar is at 10 to 5 5 o'clock will be jamaat it gives you enough time inshallah laziz everybody on the same page are we all together let us break now we're going to follow me i'm going to just act as a tour guide which i'm not doing uh, very good at but i must say it. i want to say two friends of mine who are here and they old they elderly not too old but the elderly uncle gulam and ismail mohammed um, they've been involved with us at sahuk with the uh, mzb but they surprised me a little today uncle ismail a little bit you want to stand up so the teacher of alexa and uncle gulam where's uncle gulam there you see <laughs> and you know everybody knew that this program starting at quarter past two half past two got a pastor ever get a message we on our way no uncle ismail we say jazakallah to you guys but we're not going to keep you here even if you come early we're not going to keep you in the home you rather stay with us and you will always be with us inshallah laziz so jazakallah khairul za please let's follow and inshallah we will talk about the madrasa ziaul badr the establishment then we'll tell you about darul hifz and i want to say all this goes to our ustads and i want to say one of my great ustads that is monana yusuf pandor may allah give him long life our ustad who taught us alif ba ta sa and that ustad till today where we are he is still the 
man who put that foundation in our education. So all the sawab goes to all our asatizas and all our apas who thought us, no matter what they thought us, but on this occasion we do not forget those who put the foundation. Jazakallah. You can meet Maulana later. Let's go. Let's go. No, all is in. Yeah. This one is for the live broadcast. If to honor the women on Women's Day. This one is for the live broadcast. They want us to use all. Come see us. Uh, brothers, let's go. Bye. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mufti Saf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. But before we go further, I just want to say to all the brothers, um, we're going to the father's home. What you see here on this board is a dream. Inshallah, we have a dream for a retirement village where you find a lot of people living. You find parents living in homes. They have huge homes, five, six bedroom homes, and they are alone. So we can't uh, solve the problem of the Ummah, but we can address the problem of the Ummah by giving them a secured place to stay. This will be on a rental basis, and there will be some services that will be uh, given to them also. For example, in uh, Britain, you find that you have a cleaning service that cleans a flat or you get a laundry service that does the laundry, or you get a cooking service that does the food. This is our next dream, inshallah. And if we don't have a dream, then it's useless. Always have a dream, and dreams always come true. The father's home is a dream. The Darul Hifs complex was a dream. The masjid was a dream. The mother's home was a dream. Yes, our dream. So you will say you just finished one day and you're dreaming already. Rather dream than never. Let's take a walk. The lane is across the road. <laughs> By, uh, please follow us. And uh, let me say to you, on the left-hand side, you see this Darul Hifs complex. This Darul Hifs complex, we put the foundation on the 16th of May 2012. And on the 10th of November 2012, we completed this whole building. The foundation was done by Maulana Yusuf Pandor, and the opening was done by Qari Mushtaq Ahmed from Lucknow, the son of Maulana Muhammad Ahmed Sapatabgari. This building was built in about eight to nine months, complete from scratch. Where is uh, Kubas? Please, Kubas, come in the front. We want to interrogate you. And where is Sadiq? Kubas is the builder. Manier Kum Forintu. But today, I told him he should have come with that short pants of his. Yeah? And where is uh, Sadek? Uh, Kobus was the builder from the beginning. And I must say, Sadek was the architect. We gave him the ideas that we want to. And Kobus have been stuck with us, or we stuck with him since then. So we've done this building. We've done the uh, mother's home. And now we have done the father's home. And inshallah, if the almighty wills, we will look at the next project also, inshallah. Let's go together. Kubas, come, let's go. Chalo, let's go. Bye, Muhammad. Just to tell you about a little bit about our masjid. Sheikh Musa, just walk a little bit at the back. Just tell you about our masjid. The foundation of the masjid is a still a house foundation. When we bought this home, it was a solid home. We did some uh, soil studies. That's why you'll find the surfs in the masjid are a little skew because we've got it Qibla. But the foundation is the original foundation. It's made of rock. That's what. And up to now, I had to just turn it all towards Qibla. It would have cost us that time 600,000 because we in a dike. decided not to go. Where you had only about 30. But we kept the same floor. And let me say to you, you'll be surprised. On a Juma,
Turkey. There's a that live from many, many different countries here. Have transport. Our Fajr Namaz and our Queen Sight in such a way, example, this Ramadan, we had our Fajr in Pasi. Ten to seven, the next start. Seven was the Fajr of Eid Allah. So after Fajr, immediately after the Dua started, you won't believe it at court. Already. The whole idea is today we need to make it possible for people to attend our massages and make it easy for them. We want to have it, guys. Yes. Now, if I have people that came here for Fajr, 20% of them, if they went to an Idgah, would have been a Take three taxis before going to In good weather, where we sit now, that is where we read our Eid Salah. And let me say to you, I don't want you to do it now, I move this up, that uh, after the Eid Namaz, people take selfies and they send it home that we read Eid Namaz on the beachfront. <laughs> because we've got a beach there. Let me say, house across the road belongs to Haji Ibrahim. Uh, he owns the home. And uh, these houses here on the left-hand side uh, belongs to Madrasa Zia Old Brother. These houses here on the left-hand side, uh, you know, when we visit businessmen, they, there are some questions that businessmen pose to us. And let me say to you, there are genuine questions. We talk about sustainability. A lot of businessmen ask you, what are your sustainability plans? Let me say to you, at Madrasa Ziaul Badr, yes, we are working towards sustainability. And where it comes to Lilla, Inshallah, Aziz, Inshallah, Aziz, in the next seven to eight or nine years, we will be sustainable where it comes to Lilla. You won't be sustainable where it comes to Zakat, but Zakat you'll have to collect. And number two, another question that is always asked to us, what do you know and what have you done about succession planning? Let me say to you, in our hold and in our fold, besides the five directors, we have a good, solid foundation of volunteers who are with us. First of all, let me say a secret to you, that there is no secret in our madrasa amongst the directors. If there is anything to be done, to this extent that even a color has to be changed, you'll have a 10 minute mashwara. But tell the directors what we want to do. I don't want the director to somebody else, that hey, you guys are changing the color of the masjid, directors will say, hey, what's happening? That is where the, the thought and that is put in then. So what we do is we don't have, one is we don't have secrets. Number two, whatever we need to discuss, we put it on the table and we discuss it. It took us 25 years for the mother's home. 28 years ago, I seen the mother that had passed away. Let me say, while Morana was speaking, just in the month of May, I got a telephone call from the Department of International Relationship. A lady called me, Sister Firoza. Sister Firoza's brother lives in Galway, in Ireland, Scotland. Sister Firoza last spoke to her brother was in December. Let me say to you, only to come to know in the first week of May, that the brother had passed away in December. No neighbors, nobody knew that the man had died in his flat. Neighbors never had that smell, touch also to smell that a person's body is rotted and it's decomposed totally. Only after 19 weeks, after doing different DNAs with the family, yeah, last week only, we buried the brother in Galway. 
and with the help of Muslims who are there and the doctors that are there that helped us to bury Department of International Relations have said, we will bring the body. What is the use bringing a skeleton? Rather leave that skeleton there, let's bury him. But it teaches us, today we want to love, I want to love independent. I want to love, I don't care about my parents. I don't care about my children. And this is the way, this is not the first time that we have met and we have come about where we have found mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters dying by themselves and finding their decomposed bodies. And let me say to us, this business of our independence, and we don't like to keep in touch with one another, at the end of the day, we need somebody at the end of the day. So if you see on the left hand side, this is our sustainability project here, which we have these houses, we have bought already. It's, a gener uh, it's income generating towards the madrasa. Then we had a uh, family donated a property to us for Isa Sawa for Wakaf. That is also part of generating income and the sustainability project that we have put into place. And we have been to, and alhamdulillah, in our Muslim community, we do have very, very professional financial planners who can give you the Sharia requirements and who gives you the advice according to Sharia. And we have done so. On the left-hand side, if you see where this board says, MZB Father's Home opening soon, that land belongs to us also. We had that dream many years ago to have that land and it belongs to us also. And that is where, inshallah, the retirement village we want to put up. <clears throat> this was a burnt house house we bought out and one donor came up and said, Karissa, what are you people going to make? And we told them that we're going to put up a father's home. And we negotiated with a person, it was burnt out, and they wanted 360,000. Alhamdulillah, we find men amongst men, and we find heart amongst hearts. We have people amongst us who have such hearts. The most difficult route to a person is from his heart to the pocket. And let me say to you, I'm not say, uh, shy to say that there are many men out of men that are here. Have that difficult route from the heart to the pocket, they don't mind. They open their hearts and they have made this possible with the fuzzle and karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 360,000, one brother paid his house so that we can make it into a father's home. Brother Mustafa, you can open that. Uh, when Maulana came, when he came, uh, it, was, it was dilapidated. Uh, let me say to you, uh, brothers, before we go any further, just wait one minute. Mustafa, will you please open that door? Will you open that door slowly? Let me say to you the facilities that we have. Yes, we have. But we have made another facility. Try to be a, try to make it easier for the mothers or and the uh, the locality. We will still use Bertrams whenever it's possible if they want us. The Gusar facility we have opened. Let's just have a look at it. And thereafter, Olana will make a do at the end of the home. Molana, why not? While you live in, you must have the best. When you go in, you must have better than that also. Yeah, state of art. Yeah, state of the art. Let's, uh, we're going to ask uh, Brother Mustafa to just open this chain here. You can open the chain. You can go inside the lights. Just can you open the gate? Just open it. You can put on the lights. Just wait here. Yeah? Molana will make a dua for 
Kam. Malana, the Imam of uh, Hamidia Masjid, Firaz no department che. That is Firaz's department, eh? Firaz. That this facility is our facility. Mona Musa, sir, please come forward. You will listen to the Amin of yours. One Mona Abbas to make a dua. And wallahi, I sincerely make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever we are doing. Uh, it's not about monetary gain. Maybe thinking that we're making some money out of it or there's any other name or fame, we don't need. The fame that Allah gives you is more than enough. We don't need any fame. We don't need any fame. Mufti Saab, Mufti Muhammad. Mufti Muhammad, please come. Maulana, Maulana Abdus Samad Daya, please come forward. By Firoz, can we take a dua, brothers? Firaz Bulbulia, bring the brothers here, Firaz. Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabi sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa la aqibatu lil muttaqeen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulih al kareem. صلى الله عليه وسلم تبارك ربنا وتعالى يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تستجيب لنا دعوتنا وأعطينا رغبة وأن تغنينا عمن أغنيته عنا من خلقك اللهم هذا اللهم لا تجعلنا بدعائك شقيا وكن بنا يا الله خير محمد ولا تنتجينا بأمر جميع الأحوال والحاجات وترفع لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها وتبلغنا بها من جميع الخيرات في الحياة صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلاة تنفل تنحل بها الكرب وتنفرج بها الكرب وتفضى بها الحواج وتنال بها الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم وحسن وحسن الخواتيم تسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه بعدد كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك وبارك وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم افتح لنا بالخير والقبول يا اللهم افتح لنا هذا البناء بالخير والقبول يا اللهم افتح لنا هذا والقبولية بفضلك وكرمك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتقبل منا سعينا بفضلك وكرمك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين برحمتك يا